Good morning, Remix Conf. My name is Eric Rasmussen, and today I'm going to be talking to you about visually coding backend logic using state machines. So before we get too far, um, let's talk about what state machines are. So a state machine defines an initial state and then some finite number of other states. That's why sometimes they're called finite state machines. And then events to transition between the states. Uh, there are other things like firing off side effects here and there, but this is the basic concept. Now, on the front end, typically what we do with state machines is we instantiate a machine, and then as the user goes interacting with the UI, events are sent to the machine, which may or may not have it transition to a new state. And if we're using a um, declarative um, system like, like React, it's easy to change the UI as those states change. And typically your machine is like on for the lifetime of the component or the page. Now, on the back end, this is a little bit different. Like normally state machines have a final state where once you get to that state, you're, you, can't, you can't get out of it, the machine can shut down. Uh, but on the back end, it's a little bit more complicated because we don't want to go all the way to completion because we want to pause in the middle. So we need what I'm calling pause states where when we get to this state, we're going to um, stop processing and give the data back to the client and then wait for a new, a new event to come. And not all states are pause states. Uh, maybe we're in, we're in a state and then we get an event and we need to go to another state where we're waiting for some data to come back and then maybe we go to another state and we're doing some more fetching and then we finally get to a pause state and that is when we give the data back. Uh, and we also have to figure out where to persist the machine because HTTP is fundamentally stateless and we're putting everything under cloud functions and on the edge, and we have to figure out a way to not start from scratch every time we get a request. So there are several options. We can serialize our machine to, uh, to a database or to some sort of a session store or to Redis or something like that. But in the spirit of Remix of going back to the platform, uh, for my demo, I'm going to be using the humble cookie. Yeah. We all have cookies, don't we? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, we, but we have a problem. In computer science, there's this thing called the halting problem. And that states that it's impossible to know if a computer program is ever going to return anything. Like, it might just be taking a long time, or it might be in an internet loop and is never going to return. So, what if we never get to a pause state in our machine. Well, when you're doing state machines on the back end, you absolutely must set some sort of a timeout where if it isn't returning, you need to cut it off and uh, get back to the user and tell them that um, something went wrong. Now, my favorite state machine library is xState, and they have a nice API for, uh, for doing this. I wrote this function called um, async interpret because the, the normal way that you use xState machines on the client, you use this interpret function. So I'm calling this async interpret. And you give it the machine definition, how long you want to wait for, potentially an initial state if you have got a state from the cookie, and potentially an event if an event has been sent. And what it does is it uses the regular interpret, interpret um, function to get this service. And this is the way you like boot up a machine is you call start and you give it an initial state. And if we happen to have an, um, an, an event, we send it to that. And then the state machine is often doing its thing. And then we wait. And this wait for returns a promise, of course. And so we give it our service where our machine is doing stuff. And we give it how long we want to wait. And then we give it this, uh, this predicate. And this predicate is going to be called every time the state machine has a state transition. And the question it's asking is, should we pause, should we resolve this, um, this promise and uh, get back to the user? 
Now, state.done is true when you're in a final state, and xState allows you to put just arbitrary tags on different states. So the way I've implemented this state machine is on the states that I want to be pause states, I've put this pause tag. So this is going to return true if we're in a pause state or in a final state. And that's it. This is all we need to run xState machines on the back end. So a little bit about the architecture um, of what I've built here. Uh, states are routes. Like, if you think about it, and I'm pretty sure no one in this room has thought much about routing, um, <laughs> routes are fundamentally state machines, right? Uh, you're, you're at a route, and you click a link, and that's a transition to another route. If you hit the back button, then you transition back to the other state. They're basically state machines. And speaking of the back button, uh, it's absolutely fundamental that we don't break the back and forward buttons on the browser because that will kill the user experience. Um, and this, is, this adds a level of complexity. So whenever, and also it's not just back and forward one, like you can go back three or, back, or forward four. So uh, given, in order to maintain consistency with the route, given whatever route, we have to have a way to tell our machine to just go to that state. So we need some global go-to event that's going to take us to whatever state the route tells us we should be in. And we're going to serialize our state to a cookie. And we're going to use that async uh, interpret function to run the machine. But how are we going to send events? We're going to, in the interest of respecting uh, the platform and the way Remix wants us to do things, we're going to send events as form data. And the way that works is we use the form uh, component that Remix gives us. And we set the method to post. And then we just use a regular old HTML submit button. And not a lot of people know that you can give a name and a value to your submit button. So we're going to give it the name type and the value next. And then when we deserialize our form data on the server, we're going to get this nice JSON that happens to look like the event shape that xState wants. But what if we want to do more than just uh, go next, um, send a single simple event like that? Well, if we need some extra payload in that event, uh, we can use a regular old HTML hidden input. Uh, I used these so much 15, 20 years ago, uh, and it's fun to see them coming back. You know, very retro. Thank you, Remix. Uh, so you can just give a name and value pair, and it's going to appear in that JSON that you get back on the server. And same thing for your type, just like with the next event, it's going to be there as the type. And this is going to be processed by xState really well. So on the back end, how do we do stuff in Remix? Well, we use loaders and actions. Now, for this uh, little project I've put together here, which is a little cart e-commerce checkout thing, uh, we're going to have a root route which has a loader and then a dynamic state route that has a loader and action. So let's quickly go through these. This code will be available on GitHub for you to look at more slowly. But um, in general, on our root uh, route, we're going to check if we have a cookie with our state machine. Uh, and if we do, we're going to redirect to whatever state the cookie machine thinks that we're in. Uh, but if we don't, we're going to um, we're going to boot up a fresh machine and let it do whatever it needs to get to do to get into it the first pause state. And when it does, we're going to redirect to that state and save the cookie, of course. Uh, and that's that's all we have to do for the root route. Now, on the dynamic state route. We're going to get whatever state is in the, is in the URL from, uh, from the parameters here. And we're going to read the cookie. And if for some reason either of those we don't, we don't have, we're going to uh, redirect back to the root so it can start us over again. And uh, we're going to create, we're going to instantiate our machine with, uh, with, the, um, with the cookie state. And then if the state from our uh, from our cookie matches the state of the route, then we're like, we're in the right place already. We're just going to uh, send this um, 
serialize this state, and if we happen to be in a final state, we're gonna blow away the cookie. But what happens, yeah, otherwise we don't. Uh, but what happens if we're not in the same route that matches our, the state machine in the cookie? Well, that's where that go to event comes, comes from. So we're gonna use our async interpret thing, we're gonna give it our machine, our timeout, and our current state, and then we're gonna send it this go to event. And that's gonna transition us to that state that we need to be in, and we're gonna send that back to the client with a cookie. Now, our action is doing the same thing that the loader is doing. It's pulling the cookie and, and, making, and instantiating the machine. But then we're gonna look at if we have an event from the form data, and we're going to uh, run our machine with that event and wait for it to get to a pause state. And when it does, if we're in a different state than we were before, then we're going to redirect to the new, to the new uh, path and of course serialize the machine. And if we are in a diff, or if we're in the same one, then we're just gonna send that state back and with, a, um, with the machine as well. So uh, let's look at some X date uh, terms. Um, guards are little predicates that determine whether or not you're allowed to transition to a, to a different state given, a, given an event. Actions are for launching side effects. Um, one such side effect is updating context within the machine. And the context in the machine is like a little local storage thing inside the machine. Uh, you can think of it like a Redux store or something. But this context is gonna be part of the serialized machine that we send down in the cookie. And then services are what, are, uh, what we use for async talking to other things. You invoke a service and then you can send events to it and receive events from it. And, um, and that's how we're gonna do that. So, we're gonna attempt some live visual coding. Bear with me. Okay, so this is our state chart of our machine. It uh, might look like a bit at first, but it's actually a lot easier to understand the flow of what we're doing. And to do that, this is an, this is an editor that um, the Stately team put together. But to sh sort of walk you through it, we're gonna press simulate here, and we're gonna sort of see how it's gonna work. So this little guy here means that this is the initial state. So we're in the shopping cart. And in the shopping cart, we're gonna be able to uh, increment and decrement a given product. And this guy here is an action to update our, our internal context. And notice we're not transitioning with this. This is we're staying in the same state, but we're just like updating our context. And if we hit checkout, this is a guard. If we have items chosen, then we're going to transition all the way over here to shipping. And of course, there's, a, there's an event we can go back to cart if we want, and we can go next, in which case we're gonna save that shipping data to the context, and we're billing, we can go back if we want, we can save again, and here we can place order. And this is not a pause event, this is uh, an event where we are invoking this place order thing that's gonna go and write to the database and go take the money from, our, from the customer. And it's gonna, when it's done, it's gonna come back with order placed. And this means that this is the final state, so that this is, this is the end of our, uh, of our flow. So what does this look like? Well, here we have my beautifully web design skill uh, e-commerce site here. Uh, so as I press this, this plus button, we are, we're going to be sending that increment product thing to the server. Uh, it's going to go through that state machine, update the context, and then give it back to us. So we can update this, update that, and if I go to checkout, now I'm in shipping, I can go back to cart, I can go back to checkout, I can hit back, and I can hit forward. We're going, um, notice the, the route has changed. Uh, but here we don't have any states. And the purpose, what I, the, what I wanna demonstrate here is, um, I have this sort of arbitrary requirement where depending on the things you've chosen in your cart, you can only ship to certain states in the US, for example. Um, 
So we're going to implement that visually. So where we need to do it is between, when we're in the cart and when we hit checkout, uh, somewhere between here we're going to need to load some states. So I'm going to create a new, uh, create a new state here. And we're going to call it loading shipping states. And when we're in this loading shipping states, we're going to invoke a, a service called load shipping states. And so we have to get here when we, when we click checkout, right? So watch this. Don't blink. Boom. Whoa. So now we're in this state, and, we're, and we've gone and we fetched this, but we need to get out of this state now. So we need to go over here to shipping. And it's generated this event type, which is not actually the type that I want. Uh, I'm going to call this event uh, shipping states loaded. Yeah, states loaded. And in this, uh, so we're almost done. But we need to save the shipping states to the context. And we do that with an action. Save shipping states. And now we're going to be over here in shipping. So this editor, as I've been doing things, has been modifying my code. And as my code is being modified, Remix is reloading it. So now, in theory, if this, if this demo works, uh, <laughs> When I press proceed to checkout, it's not going to go immediately there. It's going to go and fetch the states, and then it's going to take me there. So I'm going to press it. It's going to take a second. And now we have states. So uh, my name's Eric. I'm originally from North Carolina. And yeah, but I'm going to charge this to Kent in Utah, if I can choose it. I'm going to press place order, and it's going to take a moment also because it's doing an async thing. And then we placed our order. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to disable JavaScript. Yes. Oh my god. And we're going to come here again, totally fresh. And with JavaScript disabled, we're going to prove that this is disabled because we go to the network tab. These JavaScript things are not here. So now, before, when I pressed, when I pressed plus, uh, it, Remix was doing some fancy stuff for me. It was, it was emulating the platform, but really, it was, it was running a fetch because that's better if you can. But if you can't, it's going to let the browser just do its tickets course. So now when I press plus, it's going to actually reload this whole document every time I'm changing these values. No JavaScript is happening, right? Yeah. And so now when I proceed to checkout, uh, you know, I'm here. I, got my, I have my states. Again, I'm going to ship it to myself. And this time we're going to charge Michael, who lives in California. And no JavaScript, we placed order. <laughs> and I kid you not, that confetti is actually CSS. <laughs> if that doesn't blow your mind. So we are going to quickly go back to here. my presentation again. So uh, to recap, we had these pause states as routes. And uh, we had these async states that while we were waiting on stuff to interact with the real world. Uh, and we used a timeout to ensure that we didn't wait too long for those, for those things to come back. And our browser back and forward buttons worked because we used this go to event to respect the route. 
We passed events as form data, which is what allowed us to not need fetch. We didn't have to do that event.prevent default, right? We could actually send the data. And we had this beautiful uh, visual design tool for the backend logic, uh, courtesy of Stately. You should check them out. And if we need, didn't need it, there was no, uh, if we didn't have it, there was no front end JavaScript required. So thank you very much. <laughs>